Today's reading begins in 2 Samuel, chapter 15, starting in verse 23. David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. All the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over towards the way of the wilderness. Behold, Zadok also came, and all the Levites with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down God's ark. And Abiathar went up until all the people finished passing out of the city. The king said to Zadok, Carry God's ark back into the city. If I find favor in the Lord's eyes, he will bring me again, and show me both it and his habitation. But if he says, I have no delight in you, behold, here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. The king said also to Zadok the priest, Aren't you a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaaz your son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. Behold, I will stay at the fords of the wilderness, until word comes from you to inform me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried God's ark to Jerusalem again, and they stayed there. David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives, and wept as he went up, and he had his head covered and went barefoot. All the people who were with him each covered his head, and they went up, weeping as they went up. Someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is amongst the conspirators with Absalom. David said, Lord, please turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. When David had come to the top, where God was worshipped, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his tunic torn and earth on his head. David said to him, If you pass on with me, then you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city and tell Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past, so I will now be your servant. Then you will defeat for me the counsel of Ahithophel. Don't you have Zadok and Abiathar the priests there with you? Therefore, whatever you hear out of the king's house, tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. Send to me everything that you shall hear by them. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. When David was a little past the top, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of donkeys saddled, and on them two hundred loaves of bread, and one hundred clusters of raisins, and one hundred summer fruits, and a container of wine. The king said to Ziba, What do you mean by these? Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that those who are faint in the wilderness may drink. The king said, Where is your master's son? Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, Today the house of Israel will restore me the kingdom of my father. Then the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. Ziba said, I bow down. Let me find favor in your sight, my lord, O king. When King David came to Baharim, behold, a man of the family of Saul's house came out, whose name was Shemai, the son of Gera. He came out and cursed as he came. He cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men who were on his right hand and on his left. Shemai said when he cursed, Be gone, be gone, you man of blood and wicked fellow. The Lord has returned on you all the blood of Saul's house, in whose place you have reigned. The Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom your son. Behold, you are caught by your own mischief, because you are a man of blood. Then Abishai the son of Zeruiah said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please let me go over and take off his head. The king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? Because he curses, and because the Lord has said to him, Curse David, who then shall say, Why have you done so? David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, who came out of my bowels, seeks my life. How much more this Benjamite now? Leave him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord has invited him. It may be that the Lord will look on the wrong done to me, and that the Lord will repay me good for the cursing of me today. So David and his men went by the way, and Shimei went along on the hillside opposite him, and cursed as he went, threw stones at him, and threw dust. The king and all the people who were with him arrived weary, and he refreshed himself there. 
Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. When Hushai the archite, David's friend, had come to Absalom, Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your kindness to your friend? Why didn't you go with your friend? Hushai said to Absalom, No, but whomever the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, I will be his, and I will stay with him. Again, whom should I serve? Shouldn't I serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in your father's presence, so I will be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give your counsel what we shall do. Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go in to your father's concubines that he has left to keep the house. Then all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they spread a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. The counsel of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if a man inquired at the inner sanctuary of God. All the counsel of Ahithophel was like this, both with David and with Absalom. The Gospel of John, chapter 18, starting in verse 25. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said therefore to him, You aren't also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being a relative of him whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Peter therefore denied it again, and immediately the rooster crowed. They led Jesus therefore from Caiaphas into the praetorium. It was early, and they themselves didn't enter into the praetorium, that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Pilate therefore went out to them, and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man weren't an evildoer, we wouldn't have delivered him up to you. Pilate therefore said to them, Take him yourselves, and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It is illegal for us to put anyone to death, that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he should die. Pilate therefore entered again into the praetorium, called Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this by yourself, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight, that I wouldn't be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this reason I have been born, and for this reason I have come into the world, that I should testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, and said to them, I find no basis for a charge against him, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Therefore, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They all shouted again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. So Pilate then took Jesus and flogged him. The soldiers twisted thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple garment. They kept saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they kept slapping him. Then Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I bring him out to you, that you may know that I find no basis for a charge against him. Jesus therefore came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment. Pilate said to them, Behold, the man! When therefore the chief priests and the officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When therefore Pilate heard this saying, he was more afraid. He entered into the praetorium again, and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Aren't you speaking to me? Don't you know that I have power to release you, and have power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power at all against me, unless it were given to you from above. Therefore he who delivered me to you has greater sin. At this, Pilate was seeking to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you aren't Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. 
Now it was the preparation day of the Passover, at about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. He went out, bearing his cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, on either side one, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote a title also, and put it on the cross. There was written, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Therefore many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews therefore said to Pilate, Don't write, The King of the Jews, but... He said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Psalm 119, beginning in verse 113. I hate double-minded men, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word, that I may live. Let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I will be safe, and will have respect for your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is in vain. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you. I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is just and righteous. Don't leave me to my oppressors. Ensure your servant's well-being. Don't let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail, looking for your salvation, for your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness. Teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding, that I may know your testimonies. It is time to act, Lord, for they break your law. Therefore I love your commandments more than gold, yes, more than pure gold. Therefore I consider all of your precepts to be right. I hate every false way. Proverbs, chapter 16, starting in verse 10. Inspired judgments are on the lips of the king. He shall not betray his mouth. Honest balances and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. Music